This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Hi, my name is Eero Kafetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the only podcast which delivers cutting-edge conversion strategies from the online trenches straight to your earbuds. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. I also invite you to grab a free copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. And now, once again, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. You are listening to List Building Lifestyle. Welcome back, boys and girls, for another list building adventure with your man, Mr. Igor Kafetz. Hey, John, let me ask you a personal question. No. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're married, right? Sure am. Do you listen to your wife? That is a great question, and I listen as much as humanly possible. Wow. Well, you're so much better in this stuff than I am, because the one of the biggest complaints I get from my wife is that I never listen. And truth be told, I don't. Somehow I get distracted with any with anything, really, just no matter how, <laughs> how small of a of a of a nuance comes into my space, I seem to immediately just shut off everything that comes from her and focus completely on this other little thing. Not sure why I do this. I might have gotten it from my father, which seems to be a very convenient excuse. But, you know, (laughs) that is probably why recently, like I couldn't really, me and my wife were going through this rough patch where I constantly fight with her about these tiny little things. And I realized these fights originate because I just don't listen. Now, the reason I bring this up is because most people, when they go out marketing and selling, when they go out trying to sign people up into their business opportunity, or, or even just, you know, into the service, maybe they're coaching uh, coaches or consultants, whatever the case may be, you know, most people just don't fucking listen. Mm. And that seems to be one of the biggest problems I see out there. Because if you really think about it, people buy when they feel understood and accepted. Listening is the simplest and the cheapest concession we can make to basically get people to comply with our, you know, request to whip out their credit card and swipe it, right? And in spite of what most people believe, listening is not a passive thing. It's actually the most active thing you can do to influence other people to comply with your wishes. <laughs> I like I like the idea of getting them to comply by listening. That's that's a great concept, Igor. Yeah, so while most people, when they think of the concept of selling or marketing and they think, oh, I have to talk a lot, I have to be a smooth talker, I have to be a fast talker, well, that is actually not true. My copyright mentor, Ross Bowring, he is one of the slowest talkers I've ever met in my life. It takes him forever to, you know, to think of, like, to create a sentence in his brain and then kind of have that thought translated into a sound of some sort and for it to leave his mouth. But, you know, he is one of the greatest influencers I have met. In fact, somehow he convinced me to pay him thousands of dollars each and every single month for coaching and mentoring and some copywriting work as well. And then at some point he was a partner in my business and he was getting a percentage of all my profits. Now, wow. the, one of the greatest things this guy knows how to do is to listen and to feed back to you what you just said. And so when you when you when you talk to Ross, you know, you can't help but feel understood and accepted and you feel that connection, at which point all this skepticism and all the doubt kind of goes out the window and you realize that this person has your best interest in mind. And that as a skill set could be the most vital skill you can have as a marketer of your business opportunity. I, Igor, I think you're way, way, way underselling what you just said. Because being an active listener and being able to make people feel understood makes you a better human overall. Yes, and you probably know me better than anyone else at this point. You know that I'm driven by <laughs> money first and, you know, <laughs> people's relationships second. But no, seriously, though, I realize now as I'm sharing this quote unquote wisdom, which I picked up when I was doing the high ticket uh, phone sales for my coaching program. And I realize it now that I should be listening more in my marriage. I should be listening more, you know, within my family, which again, for some reason, Jonathan, 
I find it so difficult to listen to people in real life. And I find it so easy, <laughs> you know, to listen to people when they're actually paying me money. I'm not sure. <laughs> Am I the only one who has There's this There's a issue? toll to your listening, right? There's a toll to your ear canals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But all jokes aside, seriously, if you think of selling as a process where you're supposed to be talking and talking and talking and talking in order to perhaps distract your prospect from changing their mind or realizing you're full of it, right? That is not the case. Selling is not supposed to be that way. We already uh, you know, spoke a few times about if someone's connecting with you about a solution, they definitely have this problem that they want to solve. That's a given. So they wouldn't be talking to you unless they wanted to talk to you. It's a free country. It's a free world, right? And nobody has to talk to you unless they want to talk to you. So if you already have them communicating with you, you know, you should be talking less and less anymore. Um, I had this uh, VIP client that's a member of my solo VIP club ask me something. You know, he generated a bunch of leads from uh, his first promotion with us. And a lot of these people wanted to connect with him personally before they would discuss joining his opportunity, which is a great sign. It's a great sign that you're doing something right when people actually want to talk to you on the phone. Because most people kind of try to avoid the phone and they treat the phone as private space. You know what I mean? Like they really are protective yeah. over their airtime. And, you know, so he asked me a question. He said, Igor, what do I talk to? about you know with these people like i have no idea what to talk about you know i've only been in the industry for the last three months i don't know enough about it to feel comfortable talking about it i don't consider myself to be an expert by any means and i said nathan look you don't have to be an expert and you don't have to know everything there is to know about this industry when you communicate with your prospects and potential customers because at that point they really don't need you to be that person like they don't want you to be that person at that point all they're looking for is to connect with somebody who they believe is real authentic and that you know a person who can be trusted somebody who has their best interest in mind so you know the question is how do you communicate that to these people when you talk to them for the very first time so by the time you're done connecting with them for like 15 to 30 minutes on the phone, they step out of that phone call feeling that they really should do business with you because they really like you, because they really trust you, and because you are a genuine you know, individual who really wants to help. And the answer to that question is shut up and listen. Ask questions, shut up, and listen to the answers. And when they give you the answers, ask more questions, ask high quality questions, ask them questions based on what they just shared with you. And if you do it for long enough, with a genuine desire to learn more about these people and why they do what they do, what are the problems that push them into trying to make money online, and I assure you they have problems to share with you. Once they open up to you, even if you are a stranger, they will feel that connection and you will feel that connection too. And as soon as that connection happens, as soon as there's this spark, if you will, from that point forward, you don't need to be a slick salesman in order to convince somebody to join their business opportunity. In fact, I guarantee they will be the ones to ask you, hey, Nathan, tell me more about how I can be a part of what you're doing. Like there's not going to be any sleaziness going on and any pressure. There's actually going to be lots and lots of goodwill because the dynamic of that conversation will be so different to what these people are used to. Why do you think that people have this concept that selling is talking versus what you're saying, selling is listening? Um, the culture, I guess. I mean, we've all seen movies like, uh, I think it's Jerry Maguire with Tom Cruise when he leaves the, the agency and starts his own thing. We've seen Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross with Alec Baldwin, you know, where he says, you know, close or go home, you know, a good father, I don't care, go home, play with your kids, you sell or you're nothing, you know. So mm. I guess it's this culture we live in where everybody thinks of sales as the thing you do when you want to manipulate somebody into something. And, you know, Wall Street doesn't help change that even today. I mean, guys like Jordan Belfort, you know, they're still doing that. They're still cold calling and uh, really convincing, manipulating. But we don't we don't have to play by those rules. That's that's the beauty of it anyway. I mean, I was never good at high pressure sales because that shit just just, just feels really uncomfortable to me. I, I was never brought up that way. I was, you know, I actually want to think of myself as a really nice person that just presents something that people might want. And if they want it, awesome. And if they don't, okay, no big deal. Interesting. And so I want to share and 
you have already mentioned this, but I want to highlight it for the list builders. It's something that I wrote about in the podcast mogul newsletter a while back, the uh, Snow White secret to sales success, and it's the ALR formula. Ask, listen, repeat. Ask, listen, repeat. That's the way I do all my sales calls is I ask a question, I listen. If I need clarification, I ask for it, and then I repeat the answer succinctly, and that's how people know that you're actively listening. That's the thing active listening where you're taking part, internalizing it, and then repeating it back to them in a succinct fashion makes them feel understood. And I'm glad that you brought that up today, Igor. Absolutely. And, you know, obviously being someone who spends so many hours each and every each and every week uh, listening to me ramble, you got really good <laughs> at that stuff. And yeah, like I'm happy that you use this word active. Uh, listening is really an active process. And it, it helps to satisfy one of the most fundamental needs that people have, as we mentioned earlier, feeling understood and accepted. Feeling understood and accepted is, is one of the three universal needs that pretty much governs everything we do. And at the moment we don't feel that way, the moment we don't feel like we're in the place, in that place where we are understood, where we are accepted, we don't feel comfortable and we never move forward with anything. That is why, for instance, ever since coming to Israel, I've kind of stuck with the a Russian community because I speak Russian, my family speaks Russian, so it was much easier for me to claim to Russian speakers to Israel than to establish relationships with Hebrew speaking folks who just come from a different society, different upbringing, you know, and then different language. So, you know, I felt understood over here. And that is why not only I stayed here and I made every possible decision in my life to keep myself here, and the, but not only that, I refused to go there. I refuse to consider myself to be a part of that community. And that's interesting too, because it's not, it's not just about clinging to the familiar. It's also resisting, actively resisting the unfamiliar. Wow. <laughs> there, there's so many directions that I want to go here uh, with you, Igor. But let's, let's go back to the part where you said getting on the phone with people and that being uncomfortable. So is this really the solution? Because I hear it all the time. Most sales get made on the phone, especially if you have a higher ticket item and most people are afraid to get on the phone. But is this listening, this active listening that we're talking about, is that the way to get over your shyness of the phone or, or well, that's does a it really, help? That's a really interesting question. First off, a lot of people in an industry get trained in a way where they are being told you don't have to get on the phone. And I noticed also that a lot of people wish that the phone is replaced by, say, Facebook chat or Skype chat. Mm. You know what I mean? A lot of people daydream about running the business where they close sales over email. And that can be done. <laughs> that can be done if you have established your credibility in the marketplace and you got enough web real estate that tells your stories that communicates through multiple media channels, including uh, you know written sales letters, videos, and video sales letters. You know, for me, the podcast has been a tremendous boost as far as my uh, connection uh, with the marketplace is concerned. Because it's just a very, it's like having a phone call with like ten thousand people at all at the same time. So webinars, same concept. Now, as far as the actual phone calls, if you are uncomfortable with phone calls, the way for you to show to your marketplace that you listen is to do this. You want to interview a couple of your target prospects, a couple of your ideal clients. So if you already signed someone up into your business or you have someone who thinks about joining, you, you're getting some traction, you want to offer this person uh, some sort of a bribe and just get on the phone with them, not for a sales call, but for an interview where you will ask, okay, a couple of questions to find out more about their situation. And most importantly, what are those reasons why they want to get into the business? What are the reasons they are losing sleep at night? What are the reasons that they can't stop thinking about starting an online business, but at the same time, they won't start one. What is their ideal outcome for their online business? What what would they buy with the money they'll make online? How will they change their life as soon as they realize they don't need a job anymore? And it, like basically painting a very clear before and after picture. So to show transformation, they want to go, you know, mental, physical, uh, spiritual, whatever that is, or all three. So as soon as you have that information, you got what we call your customer profile. You got the avatar, right? The ideal customer avatar. And what you can start doing now is feeding back this information to the marketplace in general, rather than doing it 
you know, with one person, just feeding it back to the marketplace and do it through your emails, do it through your videos, do it through your sales letters and sales videos, or if you have a podcast or you're doing webinars, do it there. But in other words, what you're trying to do is you're, you're showing everyone in the market that you understand what an average person is going through. Now, it doesn't have to be super the exact thing that this person is going through. No, it does not. It doesn't have to cover each and every single possible uh, potential client. So let's just say there's like five potential clients and it includes stay-at-home moms, it includes, you know, college students, it includes retired people, it includes, you know, well-to-do middle-class folks that are just started their day job. No, it doesn't have to cover everybody. It just has to tell a very specific story that you heard that person share with you on the phone. And again, this is what exactly what Jonathan's doing only in writing. You're simply feeding back what you've been told. And by doing so, the marketplace knows, hey, this guy listens. It's a subconscious thing. They won't even be able to tell you that that's exactly why they decided to work with you. It's just this sends subconscious signal to the front and back of their brain and that says this person can be trusted based on what they've just published. You can drop the mic right there. You just <laughs> gave the secret, right? You just gave the secret to content marketing. People are like, I don't know what to write about. I don't know what to make videos or podcasts about. I'm stuck. And you just gave the secret that ladies and gentlemen, just take this, run with it, and then you'll be able to afford Igor 10 times over. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, man. So anything else you want to say as we're wrapping up here? To be honest, I mean, there's no better way to sum this all up with ask questions, shut up and listen. That's it for this edition of List Building Lifestyle. You can listen to us again next time. Thank you for listening to the List Building Lifestyle. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Google Play to never miss an episode. Because who knows, just one conversion tactic we share on the show might double your list and double your business. Download the transcript of today's episode and all future episodes at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. And don't forget to claim your complimentary copy of the Wealthy List Builder Survival Guide at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com forward slash survival. This is Igor Kafetz, and until next time we talk, have a good one. This is the podcastfactory.com.